Hello, Repony. It's Lotus Moon. <sighs> I still cannot believe I reached 50 subs so fast. I do hope you liked the video. And as for the Q&A session and the music cover, I will definitely do those at some point. Either in my next video or before that. Anyway, for right now, as mentioned in the 50 subs video, I will be reading a story from MLP Gal. It is called The Phoenix. And since every chapter is pretty much short, I think I can get by with reading every chapter in one shot. So for your hearing entertainment, I bring to you The Phoenix. The Phoenix. Written by MLP Gal. Chapter 1. Hatched. A mother phoenix sat at her nest in silence, ruffling her feathers as she waited patiently. It had been days since she had seen her mate who left on a hunting trip days ago. She awaited his return eagerly. To the phoenix's delight, she didn't have to wait for too long before the fiery plumage of her mate could be seen in the sky. She sat up a little taller and cooed at him as she watched him approach. When he landed by her side, she wasted no time in, his em in embracing him. The pair's delight, however, was soon destroyed when something rustled in the bushes. Dragons, the mother uttered. She had only to glance at her mate before they both nodded resolutely. As they flew out of the nest to protect their eggs, though they didn't notice that one had fallen out. Its fall was cushioned by the leaves of its tree, and when it touched down to the ground, it rolled a few meters away. Its escape was blocked by the real leg of a young alicorn filly. Ow! She cried, but when she saw the egg, her complaint ceased. As she picked it up, she felt her awe increasing until she heard the distinct roar of a dragon when its eyes landed on her. Uh-oh, I gotta get out of here, she uttered. With the egg held in one hoof, she ran. Her horn, her horn glowed as she shot a blast of her magic at the dragons. But her attack missed and did nothing to deter her attackers. When she shot another beam at the dragons, though her aim was true and they were flung into the air, the filly gasped as she collapsed on the floor. It took a moment to catch her breath. That was close, she said with a sigh. You better get home. As she transitioned into a gentle trot, she let her thoughts wander to what she was going to do now with the egg. With this fiery, magnificent shell, it was surely something impressive. Hence, when she finally approached the large castle, she hurried inside quickly and grabbed the pillow on which the egg set was set. There, she whispered, safe and sound. As she turned, however, she heard a crack and quickly turned back around. She watched with bated breath and fidgeted as she waited, wondering what was inside. When it at last cracked, something small and orange tumbled out with a little chirp. A baby phoenix! Wow! The filly uttered. I'm going to call you Philomena. Hi, Philomena. I'm Princess Celestia. You. The filly picked with the phoenix and hugged it, drawing another chirp from the bird. To Celestia's surprise, Philomena then smiled. Chapter 2 Life Cycle Celestia looked at the bookcase in front of her face. Where is it? I know I saw it the other day. She sighed. Luna probably moved it. At that precise moment, to her utter surprise, her sister then came galloping in, running rings around her sister. Tia, 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 guess what? She cried out, jumping up and down. Did you know that when a phoenix dies, it turns to ash? Luna held up the book to the page and tapped it with a, hook, a hoof enthusiastically. When Celestia turned her head and scowled, her grin fell. Luna, I was looking for that. Celestia yelled before she snapped the book from her sister's grasp. What for? She asked. I found 
the baby phoenix and was trying to find that book so I could see what food she can eat. Philomena cocked her head at the young alicorn. She looked worried. Celestia saw the baby phoenix's expression and quickly read the page her sister mentioned. Associated with the sun, a phoenix obtains a new life by rising from the ashes. According to some sources, the phoenix dies in a show of flames, although there are other sources that claim that the legendary bird dies and simply decomposes before being born again. According to some texts, the phoenix can live over 1,400 years before rebirth. Huh. That's interesting. Philomena previously pruned her feathers somewhat without, inter without interest. Froze. Thoughts quickly began to, pun to plague her mind. What if she couldn't rise? What if somehow something went wrong? Chapter 3 Worry Philomena spent the next few days mostly lying on her pillow, caught up in her worried thoughts. She wouldn't eat or drink. Only when she passed out did she sleep. Celestia grew concerned. No matter what she tried, nothing seemed to help Philomena. The phoenix was much too occupied in fretting. What if bursting into flames hurt? She asked herself so many questions, and as she did, so her fear grew more intense until before long the poor bird couldn't take it anymore. She couldn't bear to see Celestia so horrified and even more so couldn't imagine facing such a terrible fate. And so, in a desperate attempt to escape the truth, she made up her mind. She would wait for the two young princesses to fall asleep. Then she would leave. But first, before she could go, she had one thing that she had to do. She flew lazily to her first friend's room, and with watery eyes, she set one of her feathers on the nightstand. Goodbye, Celestia, she whispered before she then flew out of the room. Before she could leave for good, however, there was another she had to, she had to wish farewell. On the younger princess's nightstand, she left another of her feathers. Goodbye, Luna, and thank you for your kindness, she thought. Then she soared out of the window and into the night. Her destination? The forest. The wind blew cold that night, chilling Philomena to the bone and making her shiver. When she noticed a tree with a hole in it, she swooped in for some slightly damp leaves with some slightly damp leaves in her beak to sleep on. Though it was not easy, she curled up and eventually fell asleep. She dreamed of Celestia that night. Chapter 4 A Few Years Later For Celestia, the years that passed without Philomena at her side felt suddenly dull and void of anything interesting. Often, the only thing that would occupy her was the thoughts of new places to search for her lost friend. So many times she went out to search for her, but Philomena would simply hide under tree leaves or inside a tree with something covering the entrance. Such was the case a few weeks later. Philomena was napping on a tree branch when she heard some pony in the bushes. She hastened to fly into the tree's trunk, a frown on her beak, as she listened intently. The voice, however, came as something of a shock to her. It wasn't Celestia's. But rather, it was Luna's. What is she doing here? Philomena thought. Chapter 5 Princess Talk Luna looked at the tree. Philomena, I know you're up there. Come down, please. Luna uttered. Philomena hesitated, but she flew to the ground. Please come home. My sister misses you. I cannot. She tried to soar away into the sky, but as her feathers had fallen out, she only had one left. Luna! The feather fell off of Philomena, and Philomena burst into flames. Luna stared at 
the ashes. It's okay, Wilhelmina. You can do it. And finally, chapter 6. Arise. At first, nothing happened. But then, the ashes finally arose. And a great beam of light burst in the sky. Philomena opened one eye. I did it! She chirped. I did it, Luna! I knew you could, Luna smiled. Now let's go home. Philomena soared into the sky and let the wind catch her wings. She was so beautiful. She soared into the castle window where Princess Celestia's room was. Welcome home, Philomena, she sighed. Philomena landed on her old post where she used to perch before, back before she ran away. She realized that she was happy here with the princesses. Philomena? Celestia uttered. Philomena looked at the princess. Don't you ever want to run away again, please? Philomena smiled at the princess. And that was every chapter to MLP Gal's story, The Phoenix. As you can see, every pony, each chapter was really short. So short that I did them all in a single reading. I hope you're not disappointed. MLP Gal worked really hard on this story, so I hope you all like it. In fact, I actually love it. I was always curious as to how Philomena actually met the princesses. And this, even though it's not canon, is a really good interpretation. My next reading will be the sequel to this, The Phoenix's Family. I do hope you like that reading as well. I am Lotus Moon, and I hope to wish you all a good morning, afternoon, evening, or night, wherever you are, Pony. Good night!